keep the secret. <laughs> this is a Chick Track Day number 7 or 8, I can't remember. Uh, I just did that because there's a new Chick Track here, and I actually found a really cool book. It's a really old book, I think from the 70s. I got it for really a good deal on eBay. I can't believe that someone would sell it for so cheap, but um, you won't find this anywhere. <laughs> I got lucky. Um, I haven't read this whole thing. It's online. If you have, you have to actually look it up by this to the title, Marriage Mess, Chick, Jack Chick, or something like that, to be able to read it online. I already captured all the pictures in case it doesn't somehow it gets lost or something because it's really hard to find even online <laughs> just to read it. But if you type that in, I think you can find it. It's on the chick.com page, but a very, very good book about a lot of family problems. They, I mean, he just, he nailed this thing. It is, what I read so far was just incredible, and the testimony about the whole story was just phenomenal. So that's why I wanted to do another Chick Track Day to let you know I found this book, and hopefully people can check it out online. I bet you it's going to be a huge, huge spiritual blessing for you. But this um, Keep the Secret is about um, Satan doesn't want anybody to know that, you know, that Jesus can set you free from sin and Satan. He doesn't want you to know that. So that's what this one's all about. It's a good track. I actually like it. And there's another one that he didn't send. I think it was uh, The Last Judge or something like that. Maybe. Who was that? I forgot who the judge was. Is it Samson or whatever? Gideon. But uh, that's that. He sends the uh, battle cries out, of course. And it's got all these really hardcore topics on there for people who like to do Christian news. It's not a bad way to go. Terrorism must be answered with revival. Amen. No sowing, no harvest. So Christians are supposed to be praying for souls, living God's way before souls, and sharing the word, and sharing the gospel and your testimony with others as well. So God will, an God will answer um, protection for his nations if we will be true, if we will be very faithful. I believe the light of the church will protect everybody. It'll be enough, like just God, like God says, I will protect uh, the nation if you are willing to, you know, for the sake of even five. I won't destroy them even for the sake of five. So if all Christians really do start to stand up to the standard, that's good. But when the Christians bring their standard down to the ways of the world, then God will release us to the enemies, and which is, it looks like this kind of a person but really, we know by Isaiah 14 who's really in control of all that. Amen. Um, people who are in league with Satan and Satan himself. It's all all one mix. It's, uh, and here's a book from Gail Ripplinger. I actually got a several Gail books. One, two, three. Um, which Bible is God's Word? Four, five. Wait. One, two, three, four, five. I thought there was another one. I got a few other things. I got a CD from her daughter, um, Bryn, Bryn Ripplinger as well, and she sings nice music, and she does a talk about it, um, about the, 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 all the scientific things about music and the spiritual value of music and how it's being changed to keep the words somewhat the same, but yet the music is, is, is bringing in a dangerous uh, leaven into the church or something. It was a really good talk, so highly recommend um, Gail Ripplinger and her daughter uh, Bryn for music and for their their um, their gift and their their personal dragon to slay among the body of Christ, which is the King James Bible preservation. She calls it the Holy Bible, the authorized version, and now it's called King James, which is actually kind of a slang term because people try to use that as a way to make it look bad. But this one right here is called Blind Guides, and I guess it's several people who were trying to um, re you know write against her and say what she said was wrong even though she shows you in the book their books and what she actually wrote and how they are blatant liars so I can't wait to read that one find out what people are doing that are blind guides and then hazardous materials um, voice of the strangers is showing you I guess it's Westcott and Hort and several other wicked spiritists and evil men that are behind the new Bibles and the, she goes so deep, I mean, two 1,200-page two books about the topic. I mean, she's done an incredible amount of research, and I believe that those who will rest their heart in the love of God are going to really receive of this and try, try to navigate between them and the Lord where they need to stand in that whole matter. Look at that. It's the voice of the strangers, and it's got a snake for the S. It's very true. Satan has definitely been attacking the church for since the beginning of the church, since... Since since everything, really. 
the awe of thy word, and because she says that she's always making hard books about bad stuff, that she wanted to make something good, but yet even this is still dealing with the contrast, so uh, brothers and sisters can see the light of the powerful things of God's word. A sister at church wanted to buy it. She actually went and got it herself. She thought it was so cool. It's just reading a little bit of it. This is interesting. Which Bible is God's word? And someone discovered this. This is an orchid. And how many different portraits of God is in this? Where there's a dove in there with the wings back there with the white dove big back there, which I'll show you a different picture in a second. And there's blood, I guess the blood on here, the red would represent the blood of Jesus and all the different portraits of the blood. And then the the, um, the Ark of the Covenant right there as well with these two angel heads right in the middle. So that was an idea, and so she put that on there right there. Which is, I'll just read it to you as it says it on the book. The cover photograph was inspired by the Smithsonian Institute, which is a bad thing, of course, but still even bad people... While they're doing what they do, they may find things that match. It's a long subject of its own, but so don't make fun of her for that. I'm sure she knows the Smithsonian is, is uh, got creepiness too, but she's giving credit where credit's due. Photographer who discovered pictorial images God placed within orchids. Ripplinger's photo of Phalaenops orchid captures God's picture of the Spirit of God descending like a dove. Right here, you can totally see it. See the head and the the back, and then the wings flapping right here. If you can see that, that's the dove. Um, Spirit of the Dead, like dove. Matthew three over the blood sprinkled, Holy Bible. He took the blood and scarlet wool and sprinkled the and sprinkled the book, saying, "This is the blood of the testament." Hebrew nine the gold. Um, Ark of the God dwelleth between the curtains of the purple um, and scarlet with which uh, with wings over the place of the ark with with the two tables which Moses put therein. Second Chronicles five eight through ten, second Samuel seven two. These curtains remind us reminds us that they clothe him with purple, although seen also seen are the ram's horns before the ark of the Lord, which bud forth. Ezekiel 29, Joshua 6. The King James Bible is a, oops, sorry, is a, is a blood-sprinkled book with the word blood appearing over 440 times. The corrupt new versions, including NIV, New King, HCSB, NASB, ESV, The Message, and The New Living, Omit the word blood at least 23 to 174 times. So that's an, a quick glance at that one. I, st I spent more time on that one just because I, I, I never really noticed that orchid thing before. Interesting ideas. The ram's horn, the crookedy looking thing, which is exactly what that is, looks like. The language of the King James Bible built in dictionary. I've seen that on YouTube. It's incredible how the Lord has preserved his word so we can understand archaic words that we don't have to worry about. Um, we don't have to worry about not understanding it. The marriage mess. Sister at church gave me this one, Holiness, Henry Blackaby. Pretty old book, used book, and I'm excited to check that out. Uh, but everybody knows in the holiness movement there's been several major heavy hitters, including Paris Reedhead, who was the president of the uh, missionary, a Christian Missionary Alliance Church. And um, he always talks about different authors and whatnot. And F.B. Meyer is one of them. So I went on eBay and I found several books that were more of the lower price books. Um, F.B. Meyer. And I started reading this one and I was really impressed. I'll be talking about it tonight in the sermon. Revival Sermons and Outlines, F.B. Meyer and others. Um, let's see who else it's got there. Um... I'll be getting into all these things. I have a lot of homework to do, obviously, but this one was really cool. She actually gave me an R.A. Tory book along with it for free, because I only got like three uh, F.B. Meyer books, and this one was separate. But uh, John the Baptist, there's tons of them. There's tons of different major topics that he has a separate book for. Pretty cool. And so I'm excited, because if this is one of the heavy hitters that was a kind of a, um, a giant for 
Paris Reedhead, then I definitely want to learn from him and all the other people that he mentions. Like, there's another guy named Riley. And as I meet with some of the leaders at the Apostolic Faith Church, one of the gentlemen there, um, he actually introduced me to him too. Uh, kind of at the same time, I was kind of, oh yeah, as soon as you get introduced in a personal way, it just seems interesting how all of a sudden it, you start to hear it. You start to notice it. There's a lot of things that just go unnoticed, and that's actually kind of a lot of what the sermon tonight is going to be about. Got lots of new people coming tonight, so it's going to be a very different night. But the thing is, is that um, um, I'm going to be trying to be really sensitive to the leading of the Spirit for how I handle the new move. So I may have to just do my best with the sermon live, because I put a lot of pressure on myself, and it, it's good because it's it adds a lot of reverence. But it also puts sometimes the wrong kind of pressure on me and makes it difficult for me to stick to what is most important um, for the continuity of the of the moment. So I'm just going to be trying to be very, very sensitive to the leading of the Lord and see what would be best for the moment there and just kind of be available for a few things. Um, I'm going to be buying, I actually already bought like 25 of them. I guess it's season one and two of the Superbook cartoons. I'm not sure if you've seen those or not. I'm going to see if I can put one up on here real quick. I really, really like these cartoons. They're so good. I have a lot of cartoons. Um, the Testament cartoons. Cool, I'm almost up to... I'm almost up to 1,400 by now. And I got a notice. Some guy has been emailing me. I'd like to see what he's got to say. Amen. Look at me. Amen, amen. Come on. Yeah, stay in fellowship, everybody. I love you. And uh, I got a new magnet for my van up here, in case you can't see it with my proper phone number, which you can just see it on this video right here. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. Click on that eventually and check that one out. The beginning has my cell phone number, so brothers can call, sisters can call one time. <laughs> one time only for the girls until until further notice. I don't really talk a lot with girls. I think it's I think there's a there's a way that that there's I just have a certain strict standard for my church, so everything will be good. Almost 1,400 in the last three years. It just sky started jumping really fast, so pretty cool. But what was I looking at? Oh, yeah. Superbook. Let's look at Superbook real quick. Superbook. So, yeah, Superbook like this. They used to have a really old-fashioned cartoon. So like this Satan Visits Heaven is the main one that you can see. There's 10 videos of Superbook Gideon, which is really neat. Um, so I bought 25 of these DVDs. They're extremely good. And there's Job. You can watch 13 of the Job cartoon, just little clips of it all, which is probably pretty much all of it. And here's a picture of the old style, really old cartoon style. And then they started getting into the really high quality other ones, the Book of Job and Book of Gideon. You can watch those online. But I got 25 of the entire shows, and there's 33 all together currently. Samuel the Boy Prophet or whatever is the newest one and uh, boy is it I can't wait to see them they're, they've been really they're nice in ministry and I also want to make the whole meeting really good for um, children and everyone to be able to learn on a certain an easy to learn level but yet stick to the seriousness of the gravity of the word of God when you're looking at it boy in the morning oh boy it is just so so huge so um, really looking forward to, here's all my sermon notes for the week, <laughs> which I gotta go over that pretty soon. Got a lot of new people coming tonight, so I wanna really watch for making sure everything's going in the right direction. And then here is my back sc screens. There. Yeah, awesome. And then there's another screen that we have here. Usually the window's shut, so there's not such a glare, but that's that. And so there's always screens with encouraging things. And, uh, yeah, that's where we're at right now. This place is getting ready for tonight. We got family coming from Tacoma tonight, and it's going to be a nice time to see what happens. But, yeah, lots of new information, a lot of new old writings. I just, something about this book, it just rings true in such a way that you just, you really just don't hear hardly ever. You know, you hear a lot of people talking strong against other churches and other groups and how everybody else is so wrong and all that, but when you hear it like this, you really feel like it's Jesus because I know that if I was to walk up to Jesus, I don't think he would treat me like the people that do that. I know that they have truth, and I know there's a time to get um, strong, but the people who did strong in the Bible, they also did a lot of things that you just can't do, so 
It wasn't just talk. It was very, very powerful. And it was meaningful in, in wooing. There's always a wooing and a love about the, the true spirit of God. And I'm, it, it's not easy to, to rest there. But I felt that ring in here. And I, I was like, oh, I can't wait to learn this and see if the Lord can really start opening things up for me further than I am even here. And just recovering from some battle wounds in the last few years has been an uh, interesting journey. But to God be the glory for everybody. Yeah, the newest Chick track. And there's another one on there. Um, hopefully you can get some of those. And um, if you do, put them on, you know, bathroom, in the bathroom stalls and things like that so people can read them on their own. It's a really private place to learn. So, um, anyways, encouraging everybody to check out the old godly way and travel this path and see if the Lord won't do something. I think there's times in history where the Lord was moving really strongly that I think it's good to learn from those voices and see what we can't do and watch out for the blind guides. <laughs> Amen.